here's everything you should do when you get your Xbox Ally and Xbox Ally X. We're going to be increasing the performance as well as just giving you loads of tips and tricks that I've accumulated after testing all these Windows handhelds for so long now. And this does apply to both the Xbox Ally just here and the Xbox Ally X, but I will be doing it on the Xbox Ally X because that's what I've got set up in front of me. Oh, and there's some good ones at the end that we'll be covering that really increase performance, so stick around. Now, as my TV has decided to do right now, updates are important, so we're gonna cover that first. So if we press the Xbox Guide button, right, and then go right over, you can see straight away, now I have Update Game Bar just there, but what we can do as well is, well, we can click on that, and that's then going to open up the Microsoft Store, right? However, there's not actually a way of getting into the Microsoft Store without that pop-up. So there is another way we can get there, but that does mean going into Windows. So what we need to do is swipe up and go to Windows Desktop and go yes, right? And then what we need to do is go swipe up from the bottom and then go to Microsoft Store. If it's not there, it's likely in your Start menu. So you'll find it just up in the top there, Microsoft Store. You can go in there and then hit Check for Updates. I really hope that Microsoft put a little widget or like a, a shortcut to the Microsoft Store in full screen experience mode because right now you have to wait for that little pop-up where it says update game bar but there's actually loads of other stuff that gets updated in there as well so always check here too but that's not the only place we can get updates we also need to update from the system so go back to your xbox button go over to the settings right scroll down and go to more settings and then open Windows settings. Here you wanna to go to Windows update, oh, and you can see straight away that I've already got a load of Windows updates already. But there's still more places to update, that is not it. <laughs> Press your Armory Crate button, and then open Armory Crate. Now you should be landing on this page just here, and then you'll see Update Center at the top there. And then we wanna go for Check for Updates. So this is pretty much the same as what it used to be like on the original Ally and the Ally X. You've got three places to check. You've got Windows Updates, you've got Microsoft Store Updates, and then Armory Crate Updates as well. Now one thing I recommend that you do straight off the bat is calibrate your controls. So we want to go into Armory Crate again. You can press the Armory Crate button and then open Armory Crate to land here. And then we want to go to Calibration. Then you've got Left Stick just here and you just follow the prompts. It's super easy. So let's just take the left stick. So press A to calibrate. So release the joystick and then press A. Push the joystick towards the dot. So I'm gonna push it over until it's in the dot. Hold it for a second, let go. And the same down. Hold it for a second, let go. Left, hold it for a second, let go. Same up again, hold it for a second, let go. Now we want to spin it all the way around three times. Left stick has been calibrated, let's go to done. Now you can do the same for the right stick and the rest as well. And this just ensures that all your controls are gonna be, you know, perfectly calibrated, <laughs> essentially, it's kind of in the name. Now, whilst we're still in Armory Crate, what I want you to do is go to the Performance tab and then go down to GPU Settings. And here you can see your VRAM. Now, depending on whether you're using the Xbox Ally, the white one, or the Xbox Ally X, depends on what setting I'm going to recommend here because we've got different amounts of shared RAM in both of these systems. The white Xbox Ally has 16 gigabytes total. The Xbox Ally X has 24 gigabytes total. So I believe the Xbox Ally comes defaulted at four gigabytes. So when you're on the Xbox Ally, I recommend that you change that to six. So what you're gonna do is go from four to six and hit okay, and then it will ask you to restart. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna restart the device. On the Xbox Ally X that we're on here, it will default to eight gigabytes, which is absolutely fine, but my recommendation is actually 10 gigabytes because then that still leaves 14 gigabytes to system and it just gives you the added VRAM for specific games that are going to eat up VRAM and play and perform better for having a larger amount of VRAM. So 10 gigabytes, absolutely fine. You do not need to go above that. That's just overkill and you will starve the system as well. So 10 gigabytes, yes, eight gigabytes is fine to leave it at, but I recommend 10 gigabytes. Now there's two ways of doing this next task that I'm going to ask you to do, and that is enable and disable 
CPU boost. So we're in the performance tab on GPU settings currently. I want you to go up to Eco Assist and then go over here to CPU boost. You can turn it on or off here. So you can enable it or disable it like so. However, if we press the Armory Crate button, we can go down and CPU boost is here. If it's not there for you, it's because I've added it. So you want to press Y and then go all the way down to the bottom, find CPU boost and just enable it into this like shortcut menu. So I'm going to back out of this because I already have it, right? And then I can turn it on or off and you can see it in the back just there turning on or off. So let's just do that again to show you. So now it's off. Now it's on. Now CPU boost, when it's on, will actually just drain more standby power and also feed more power to the like processor, the system side of the APU. Because the APU is constructed of the CPU and the GPU. It's shared on one chip, right? And this really depends on the game. So this is the game dependent, which is why I recommend that you have it in your quick settings here depends on whether you want it on or off. For the majority of the time, you probably want it off, but you can check with your performance monitor as to whether or not you want that. So I've got the real-time monitor just here where it will show you your CPU, your GPU, your temps, and all the other stuff if you go to the full size one. If you see that the CPU is the limiting factor, you might want to put CPU boost on. Generally, this is for emulation and certain CPU heavy games. It is game dependent, but in general, you probably want it off because it will increase battery life and it will give more power to let the GPU actually like ramp up as opposed to giving all the power to the CPU. So it is game dependent, so just monitor it. But in general, you probably want that off. Now we've got performance profiles that we can enable or disable in the command center here, right? We've got the Windows, Silent, Performance, and Turbo. So 13 watts, 17 watts, 35 watts. However, I personally much prefer 20 watts. 20 watts is a little bit more power drain than that 17 watts, but I see it as giving way more boost. I covered this in some benchmarks in my first look at the Xbox Ally X, so go check that out if you're interested. So what I can do here is show you how to manually create a separate mode, right? So we're going to go into Armory Crate, which we're in here. We're going to go up to Operating Mode at the top just there, and right over the corner there, there's Manual Mode. And then what I want you to do is just go, it will come up with a pop-up saying, are you sure you want to do this? And you're just going to click Yes. Now we're going to go here and go, 20 watts for this. So this is the sustained amount of power, right? So 20 watts is just the constant. Then you've got the next one up, which is like a, I think it's like a one minute or, oh, there we go, two minute boost. Sustained two minute boost. The next one is a 10 second boost. Now you can put this at like 22 and the next one at about 25 or so. So let's just bump those up. Okay, so 20, 22, 27. Some people, I haven't tested this yet, are seeing better performance by having these up higher than the sustained power limit. So I would just recommend for now 20, 22, 27, and then you want to click apply, right? So we're gonna hit apply, and this is where it comes up with a warning. We're gonna go yes. Now what you can do as well is rename it. So we can go here and go 20 watts. So I'm just gonna type in 20 and then W and then rename. Now it's 20 watts just there. Now, if I go here and go onto manual, it now says 20 watts because I've loaded that, right? And it shows you underneath here, the profile name, 20 watts, SPL 20, 22, 27, as we've just created. And now you can flip between these and if I go to manual again, it's going to default to that. I can go to the drop down and change it here as well if you so wish, but I recommend just leaving it at 20 watts because then you've got 13, 17, 20, and 35 turbo. Now the next thing you might want to turn on is battery care. So we're in Armory Crate again, but now onto like the main homepage, right? And down at the bottom here, we've got battery care. Now this will be off by default, but you can turn it on and then what this does is it basically caps the battery at 80%. Now this is really good for battery health because when batteries are fully charged all the time, let's say you're only using this plugged in or maybe you're using this docked most of the time, when batteries are fully charged, if you think of it like a little box and all the energy like being really compact because there's so much power in there, it's not got much room to wiggle and that causes a lot of stress on the battery. Whereas if you cap it at 80%, 
Well, there's 20% less little wigglers in there, right? And that means there's a bit more room for them to move and that's going to put less stress on that battery. That is a very dumbed down version of what this technically is, but I, that would be a whole nother video if I went into the deep dives of batteries and battery cares, but whatever, right? This is really important if you're going to be constantly plugged in or docked most of the time. And this is going to give you better longevity in your battery life and health. It just means the battery won't degrade as fast. Now, if you're wanting to take your device off of charge and then go away and, and use it, but you want that 100% charge, underneath here, you've got instant full charge mode. So you can enable this once and it will charge to 100% when full capacity is required. And then the battery care mode will automatically resume after 24 hours. So this is really handy if you know you're gonna be going away for a day and you want that extra 20% battery, well then great. For me, I'm mainly gaming on battery, so I'm fine charging to 100% and then depleting the battery and then charging it up again. Ideally, you want to be keeping it around that sort of 70 to 80%. That is just best for battery health. So that's just a tip there for you if you want to use that. Now, the next thing I recommend is specific game profiles, which again, we can do in Armory Crate. So we're still in the battery care. I'm just gonna back out, right? And then I'm gonna press left bumper to go to my games. So here what we could do is actually make game profiles. So you'll see game options with X, go to press X and then set game profile here. And what we can do here is actually completely remap every single button. And my main thing to do is the secondary back paddles, right? So for me personally, I like having my left back paddle to be L3 because I personally do not like clicking in the stick. And the same with the right hand side, R3 on the right one. So what we can do here is click on that, remove that set as secondary function, and then go to this one. And then I'm going to go over to right stick click because this is flipped, right? So now if I go back, that one is actually the right one, even though it shows on the left, it's the other way around, right? And then this one I could set to the left side and that is going to specifically be for just that game. You can assign it to anything you want. So let's go back to here. You can assign it to any controller D-pad, like menu or left bumper view. You can do any button input or we can go to an action. So we can have it as task manager or volume up or whatever it might be that you want for this game specifically. Same with the keyboard number pad, mouse, or even macros that you can create. And that is going to be game specific. So I'm gonna back out there. You can also change the sticks. So you can change the dead zone, the response curves per game. So if you're playing Call of Duty or something and you want a specific response curve, but you don't wanna go in every single time to create this, you can lock this to a specific game and it will only allow it when you're in that game. It's very, very good. Same with all of this. The triggers, you can make hair triggers here if you want to. You've got vibration, gyro, there is so much stuff. You can even change the GPU settings, right? Specifically for a game or even external controllers. Now, if you use Steam a lot, you might notice that the Xbox button is actually also conflicting with Steam. So we're going to open up Steam and go, yep. I've just hit big picture mode here because I'm going to default set big picture mode to be launching when Steam is open. So now we're here because this is much easier. It basically turns it into like a Steam Deck, right? So now we're going to back out and go to settings. We're going to go to controller and then the guide button focuses Steam. I've already disabled this, but this will be on. Just disable that. And now you won't get that interference where you bring up game bar, but then you're also popping up all the Steam stuff behind it. Interface just down here. It took me a second to remember where it was. And then you can go to start Steam in big picture mode and you can enable that as well. Now the next settings we're going to do is actually go into Windows to do these. So we're going to swipe up. We're gonna to go to Windows desktop and go yes. And now what we want to do is go and find AMD's Adrenaline software. So you can go in the top here and just type in AMD and it will come up with AMD software. I'm going to go into the settings cog at the top and then I'm going to go to display and I'm going to scroll down and do you see where it says very bright? So very bright, very bright, however you want to say it, effectively like makes the screen look worse whilst it's on battery power to conserve battery power. Now, if you want the absolute most battery life possible, then leave this on. But personally for me, I'd much rather have a nicer looking screen with a nicer looking colors and brightness. So you can disable this entirely by just literally grabbing the slider and going, nope, and dis disabling it. So just zero, maximize 
brightness and that is going to give you a better looking image on battery. It's the equivalent of when it's plugged in. Now we're on to the things that even more so increase performance. Now there's some that I recommend doing and one that's maybe you don't want to do but all of these are actually recommended by Microsoft for better performance for a gaming specific handheld. Now I wouldn't do this if you're doing anything shady and you like pirates. Probably don't do this. I don't do any of that stuff, so I want the best performance. I'm not gonna be using anything shady on here, so I'm at minimal risk, right? So what we wanna do is go into here and go core isolation. So just type in core isolation, and that's going to bring this up. So core isolation, memory integrity, and we're gonna hit no. And then it's gonna say, yep. And then it will require a restart for this. Now the next thing we want to do is go into search and type in Windows features and it will come up, turn Windows features on or off. And now you wanna find virtual machine platform and uncheck it. Now it was already disabled on mine, but if it is enabled, make sure you disable that and then hit okay in the bottom. And finally, this is the one that you probably wanna leave on if you're doing anything shady is device encryption. So you can go to settings, privacy and security device encryption and then hit off. Now this is actually going to take ages for this to do so just hit yes and then just wait. So all of these will probably require a restart in between. I'm not doing that because I'm just showing you bam 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 how to do it. It will tell you okay a restart is required just do that and then go to the next step. And there we have it you've now just made your Xbox Ally or and Xbox Ally X perform even better than it would out of the box essentially. So we've updated it we've gone through loads of different stuff. If you want to see more tips and tricks make sure you subscribe to the channel let me know your own if i've missed any off that you absolutely love or that you've found out yourself i'd love to see them down in the comments so hit me up please like this video subscribe become a member and you get to chat to us over on our private discord as well and i'll see you in the next one for more tips and tricks bye